they've accepted your invitation, um, but uh, after quite a lot of, of pushing and tugging, um, and there were sort of extraordinary stories that you would have gone to the extent of actually having them arrested by an officer of the House of Commons, and I think they would have been banged up in part of the Tower of Westminster. Is, is, is that actually true, or is that a sort of joke? I'm not sure anybody really knows, uh, because it hasn't been done for hundreds of years. Rebecca Brooks accepted the yes. invitation to come to the committee. Um, James Murdoch and Rupert Murdoch both said that they were unavailable on that day, so the committee passed a formal motion to serve a summons on them. Yes. Now, had they refused to uh, accept that, then I would have gone to the House of Commons and asked for a, a motion to be passed by the whole House requiring them to attend. Um, now, that would have been pretty much unprecedented. If they then failed to abide by that, I'm not, to be and honest, they, I don't think anybody knows what but happens. They, but in theory, at any rate, they would have been marched to the Commons, and there's a little, there is a little room where, the, which, which acts as a sort of cell. I believe there is in the clock tower somewhere. In the clock tower, an astonishing thought. Anyway, they are coming. They're coming on Tuesday, yeah. um, and are they all going to sort of sit in front of you together, or do you know how you're going to proceed? I think that, particularly now, the situation's changed slightly. That Rebecca Brooks is no longer an employee of News Corp. Um, I think we will probably want to talk to her separately from Rupert and James Murdoch. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the things that you're going to have to be very careful about is not prejudging the, the judicial inquiry and so on. But presumably, one of the great questions is about this very large number of emails which were being held by News International's lawyers, Harbottle and whatever they're called, yeah. um, for years um, without being acknowledged or analyzed. Is that, is that sort of at the heart of what you're going to be looking at? This is such an immensely complicated saga and yep. there are a vast number of questions. That most certainly is one of them because we looked at all of this two years ago uh, when we had an inquiry mm. which was when we were assured by all of our witnesses that nobody had any involvement. It was all down to one man. Now mm. at that time we were told 2,500 emails had been gone through in great, uh, with great care and no evidence had ever emerged that there was any involvement outside of yeah. Clive Goodman. So yes, we will certainly want to be asking if that was the case, how, how come now suddenly all this is coming out? What would make um, a good day for the committee in terms of you know the breakthrough answers that you'd like to get well i mean i think the sole purpose of the committee is to try and get closer to what actually happened and to yeah. uncover the truth so i mean i i would like and i, I hope there's a good chance that all three of the witnesses will come determined to try and do their best to help us. We obviously understand there's an ongoing police inquiry, but that shouldn't, I think, prevent us from learning a lot more about what went on, who knew it, and who authorised it. Do you think your committee was lied to in the past? Well, we said at the time, in 2009, that we simply didn't believe what we had been told, that, that it was one person. We said we thought it inconceivable that just one person could have been involved. Um, so, yes, I think we made it pretty clear then. What we didn't know was whether or not the witnesses who appear, were appearing before us actually knew more than they were saying. Mm. But now, hopefully, that will become clearer. Yeah. James Murdoch himself has said the committee, or at least Parliament, was misled. So, essentially, he's told us we were. Right. Um, you've got um, a lot of advice, helpful advice, no doubt, in all the days to you've made about what to ask and so on, but also about the tone of the committee. Um, because um, there is presumably a certain amount of danger, lots of big egos in the room, that there will be grandstanding and shouting and so on. What, what are you going to try to achieve as chairman? Well, what I don't want, I don't want us to be a lynch mob. On the other hand, I don't want us to let them off without properly addressing the questions which we have. So I, mean, I, I hope, and I'm sure that my uh, colleagues on the committee will take the same view, that we will be calm and we will ask factual, detailed questions. Mm. And you've got us, you know, a few hours to do this, but if you don't get what you want, will you have them back again? Well, obviously, I mean, it's far too soon to say that. I mean, we have to bear in mind there is a, a judicial inquiry, and the judicial inquiry will obviously have more powers than a select committee. It will take much longer. So, I mean, I think the full picture will never emerge, well, not emerge until that inquiry is complete. Yes. Now, uh, you heard on the news there was a um, comment about you being a close friend of Rebecca. You're on her Facebook page. I'm slightly shocked that you have a Facebook page. I, I, have, I have 570 friends on, on Facebook. Whether or not Rebecca Brooks is still one of them, I rather doubt since I have summoned yeah. her to appear before me. But you're not closely 
connected I've, to it. I have been doing the Culture, Media and Sport Brief in one capacity or another for 10 years. I've met almost every major figure in the, in the media. You know, I mean, this mm. story, I think, appeared in The Independent on Sunday. I've met Mr. Alexander Lebedev. He's not a Facebook friend, but that's probably because he's not on Facebook, I suspect. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, you have a busy week next week, so good luck. And thank, thank you, you very, very much, much indeed for joining us.